How are you, my student? And how are you doing? I know you're doing very well. And uh, as you continue watching the Dr. Sami YouTube channel, I know you're getting to understand more and more of chemistry. Good. Today I want us, we go form four. We are talking about energy changes. And energy changes, otherwise we call it enthalpy changes. And with enthalpy changes, quite a number of things you need to understand. There are several types of enthalpy changes, be it enthalpy change of solution, enthalpy change of combustion, enthalpy change of neutralization, enthalpy change of reaction, enthalpy change of formation. So there are several types of energy changes, others we call enthalpy changes. For today, we want to do the enthalpy change of solution. We want to do enthalpy change of solution of sodium hydroxide. And that is basically to determine what amount of heat occurs that when you dissolve sodium hydroxide in, in water. And later on, this one will help us come up with what we call the molar enthalpy of solution. I'm going to use a gadget here. This gadget is called a carolimeter. So a carolimeter, you can see how it is. So it has a container that is well insulated with a cotton wool. Yes, so that is where the reaction is taking place. So in case you don't have a carolimeter, you can basically use a plastic beaker. You only need to wrap it well with tissue paper, ensure it is well insulated, so that when you're using it for energy changes, you have minimized the loss of heat. That is the energy that you want to determine. So I also have a measuring cylinder here. I have some distilled water. I'm going to have some distilled water. The weighing balance, because I need to start with a given amount of sodium hydroxide. So I'm going to start with two grams. I need two grams of sodium hydroxide. Be dissolving two grams. So exactly that is two grams of sodium hydroxide. Then I'm going to measure a hundred ml of water. So I'm going to measure 100, 100 centimeters cubed of distilled water. Good. That is 100 centimeters cubed of distilled water. And I'm going to put in my carolimeter. So I've used a hundred centimeters cubed of distilled water. Then I will have my thermometer. What I need to do is to determine the initial temperature of this water. So I'll have to determine the initial temperature of the water. Like with this one, I'm starting at I'm starting at 19.0. I'm starting at 19.0. So the initial temperature for the water is 19.0. So immediately I will add the sodium hydroxide. I will place the sodium hydroxide at once. I will take the sodium hydroxide. Then I place it at once. And once I place it at once, I keep stirring, I keep stirring. Remember I can stir with the stirrer here, then as I monitor the change in temperature, as I monitor the change in temperature. I'll keep monitoring the temperature, and uh, the temperature is at 23 now. Good, 23. Keep monitoring until when the temperature will not rise anymore. That is, the temperature will be constant. 
Good. The temperature now stands at 24. Uh, the, my thermometer reading is at 24.0. Good, 24.0. Good. If I, mod, I check there, the solid has all dissolved. And uh, the temperature remains 24. So if I want to calculate the change in temperature, it will basically be the highest temperature subtract the initial temperature. 24 minus 19. So I've had a temperature change of 5 degrees Celsius. So then we need to go to the calculations. We need to go to the calculations. And uh, where exactly do you start? Where, where do you start? And that's why I'm now having the, the, the whiteboard here to help us do the calculations. The change in uh, heat or the, what we call the enthalpy change you calculate using the formula the mass of the liquid or the solution you're having multiplied by specific heat capacity then multiplied by the change in temperature so you ask yourself what is this m so the m in the formula is basically the mass of the water that you the, the heat change occurred so we used 100, we used 100 uh, cubic centimeters of water, or um, uh, ml of water. We need to multiply that with the density of water, which is one gram per cubic centimeter. If you convert that, you get 100 grams. With 100 grams, you can decide to work with the kilograms. So you divide the 100 grams with uh, the 1000 to get 0 0.1 gram. Then the specific heat capacity, this is a constant. Uh, that is the specific heat capacity for water. And it's obviously always given as 4.2. If you are deciding, to, if you have decided to work with grams, then it would be 4.2 joules per gram per Kelvin. If you decide to work with kilograms, that is the M, uh, then it, the, 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 your, your C will be 4.2 kilojoules per kg per uh, Kelvin. Then the delta T is basically the change in uh, temperature, the change in temperature. So if we work out the uh, heat change for this reaction, we are going to multiply, that is the 0 0.1, that is the M. We multiply it uh, by the specific capacity 4.2. Then we multiply by our change in temperature, which was 5. And uh, if we work out that, if we do the workout in that one, uh, that gives us uh, 2.1. It gives us 2.1 kilojoules. That means for the reaction or the experiment we have performed, the experiment gave us the heat change of 2.1 kilojoules. The next thing we need to calculate is the amount of sodium hydroxide that we started with. We started with the two grams. So you need to divide two grams divided by the molar mass of sodium hydroxide. And the molar mass of sodium hydroxide, it is 23 for sodium, add 16 for uh, oxygen. Then hydrogen gives you uh, one to make 40. You make that is 40. So two divided by 40, you get 0 0.05. You get 0 0.05. So that is the amount of sodium hydroxide that dissolved in water. So if that amount, because now the next question will be calculate the molar heat of solution. So how do you go about that? You're going to argue out if the 0 0.05 moles of sodium hydroxide gave us a heat change of 2.1 kilojoules, what about one mole? So if you again go ahead and do the calculation as it is uh, uh, performed, the heat change for that reaction will be 42 kilojoules per mole, kilojoules per mole. So that is the heat change that will occur if one mole of sodium hydroxide is dissolved in water. Oh, yeah, is basically dissolved in water to form the, the very dilute uh, solution. 
Good. With that, we are able now to write the thermochemical equation. The thermochemical equation. It is just an ordinary equation with the heat change for the reaction attached at the end. Okay? So that is how you write the thermochemical equation. Good. You, are, you can go ahead and uh, work out or rather draw what we call the energy level diagram. The energy level diagram. Remember when you oh, we worked out this one? There was increase in temperature. So the reaction was exothermic. So what do you expect with the energy level diagram? You expect the energy for the reactants will be higher than the energy for the uh, product because the heat was given out. So the reactants will be higher and of course the uh, products will be lower. Good. That was the enthalpy change of solution for sodium hydroxide. And therefore, do not forget to come back. Check more. Check more and check more. Thank you. Thank you so, so much.